Good morning. I'm so glad to welcome you here to First Presbyterian Church for our 10 o'clock worship service today. Glad that you're in-house. You will get a chance to greet one, another's in a few, one another in a few minutes. Right now, let us prepare our hearts to worship God. So glad Jeremy showed up for today. <laughs> yeah. It's great to have you joining us today, whether you're joining us virtually or in person. Welcome again to First Presbyterian Church today. We're so glad that you've chosen to worship God with us. I'd like to ask you if you're here in house or wherever you are gathered today to look around and see if there is somebody that you can introduce yourself to in Christ's love. But stay.
Okay, I get a thumbs up from the booth, so hopefully Sarah and I have figured out who's buzzing down here. We're blaming each other. For, um, if you're with us in worship, you can turn to the bulletin. If you're joining us online, I do want to note the flowers today. The flowers in worship today are given to the glory of God and in honor of Ed and Loretta Smith's fifth anniversary. So happy anniversary to you all, and thank you for sharing your celebration in the form of flowers to grace our worship place today. Soup Kitchen yesterday, Betts Huff answered a, an email and phone call on about Wednesday because we didn't have anybody to do Soup Kitchen as the head cook. Betts jumped up there and she and Kathy Kegler and Diane Repass and Susan Smith and Caitlin Hobbs and Angela Large and Demi Lloyd and Andy Vogt. That group came together. They made tuna nuda casserole and broccoli and all the trimmings. And because of their jumping up and doing that and our providing the place, 58 people did not go to bed hungry Saturday night in Winter Haven. So thank you all so much for your work. And because I encouraged them to cook for 200, there will be another 100 people in Winter Haven that will not go to bed hungry in the near future because they put seven full casseroles of that back in the freezer for us for when we need to turn around and do that. So thank you. Um, two of the next four weeks are being covered by our community partners. St. John's United Methodist Church will be in in one of those weeks. Hope Presbyterian will cook the other week. That means two out of the next four weeks are still open for us. So September 16, that's next Saturday, and September 30, we do need head cooks and a full crew. So if that is a passion of yours and you would like to help feed hungry people, just go down and sign on the bulletin board today or call us tomorrow and we'll put you on there. There. We do need to cover the 16th and the 30th, but thank you all for helping us feed so many folks in this community. Um, programs are back. The PW Circles are going to be meeting this month. The choirs have already started. The book club is this month. The men's lunch is every Tuesday. Youth groups are back on Wednesday night and Sunday night. Fun timers will be back at full schedule this month. Saturday Night Live will be back for their fall and their winter schedule. And if you'd like to volunteer, you can drop by here Saturday night from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. It's a dance. No, it's a birthday party celebrating everybody's birthday. So if you would like some mini cupcakes and a lot of smiles, come and join us. That'll be at 7 o'clock Saturday night. And Christ Kids are back this week. So we look forward to that. Sunday school is meeting today. They started last week, or we starting today. Today we're starting Sunday school for the children. We just had Sunday school before church for adults. So things are back. If you'd like to know more, just go on our website or reach out for Tower Chimes, our weekly newsletter. And then today at 4 p.m., I hope all of you will come back. Go enjoy a nice lunch, maybe take a short nap, come back at 4 o'clock, because we're going to have a piano and organ recital featuring Jeremy Rath today. So we look forward to that. And we've got some special guests. I don't know who came from where, but we have two people. Their names are Tom and Pam Rath. They came all the way from upstate New York. So let's welcome the Raths today. And not to be outdone, Ellen Zeller came over from the Palm Coast area to be with us for this. And we know a lot of folks will be coming. So please come back, 4 o'clock here. The program is going to be delightful. It's going to feature a lot of Jeremy's favorite music and three pieces that were written about Winter Haven and for Winter Haven during the 1920s land boom in the Winter Haven area. So come out and join us for that. It's a concert to benefit the restoration of an 1895 Steinway Grand Piano that's a part of the Winter Haven History Museum. And so come on out and join us. We're going to have a wonderful time tonight. Um, the dress is casual, so you don't have to get special to come out and join us. There's not going to be a reception afterwards because Jeremy and all his family are going to go to dinner and we're going to let them do that. But come and join us and we're going to have a great time and just let our hearts soar in music today. Friends, it's great to have all of you with us today. I'd like you to turn in your hymn book, if you will, right now to hymn 267. Please stand if you're physically able, and let's join in Come Christians, Join to Sing.
Please be seated. Before we can hear God's truth spoken in love, we must free ourselves from all that obstructs us from honestly acknowledging our wrongdoing. This morning, let us examine our hearts and confess our sins to God this morning together. Wonderful God, on this day, we come to praise you for our salvation. You have made us, claimed us, and called us to walk as disciples of Jesus. Forgive us, we pray, for the ways that we have not faithfully followed. Forgive us for the times when we have let work and leisure push true communion with you from our schedules. Forgive us for how we sometimes shift our tongues from praising you to condemning others. Forgive us for failing to live a life that pauses to appreciate the beauty and sights and sounds, and thus keeping our lives in proper balance. As we have paused our lives today for this act of praise, remind us of the power and purpose that you provide as we focus more closely on you. We offer ourselves and these prayers in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Christ, O oh Lord, hear our prayers and those we hold only in our hearts. It is in your precious name that we pray, amen. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Anyone who has committed sins has indeed been forgiven. In the name of Christ Jesus, we are forgiven, redeemed, and restored to God's path of righteousness, amen. This time I'd like to invite the children who are present to join me down front for our time with younger disciples. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus. Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Good morning. How many of you here play a musical instrument? What do you play? Piano. Piano? What do you play? Another piano player. What do you play, Dave? Guitars and drums. Guitars and drums. Piano. Piano. Piano and violin. Okay. Any other musicians here? Well, I want you to look around the church today and see if you can spot a piano. Oh, there's two of them. There's one over here and one over here. So we have piano players in the church, and hopefully one day you all will join us in playing the piano for us. Can you spot any other musical instruments in the church? Anything else that we play that makes a noise? Oh, those things in the back, okay. Yeah, that's, it's, it's strange because we don't see them everywhere. That's called a pipe organ. You're right. Sometimes there's guitars in the corner and drums in the corner. Sometimes, last week we had handbells over here. So, yes, ma'am? Um, does a microphone count? Um, oh, that's a really good question. Would a microphone count for that? Yes. Our voice is a musical instrument, too. So, if we sing, that's real perceptive. We can do that. Well, we believe in music in the church, and so 
We almost always have music on a piano or a keyboard in here. Lots of the times, most of the time, we have music on that organ. And one of these days, we'll get Mr. Jeremy to do a children's story. But those pipes back there, there's over a thousand pipes in that. Yeah, you see the little teeny ones? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Jeremy, we need a children's story one day on how high the highest note is and how low the lowest note. Don't do it right now. We're going we're gonna to keep it. We'll we have something to get you back. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And actually, there's only a third of the organ there. You see behind that screen there? There are half that many pipes again. And you see behind that screen there? More pipes. So when the choir sits in the middle, they get to hear all of that music. Okay, so are we done with instruments in the church? Nope, there's one more. This church believed in music so much that the day it was dedicated in 1926, we put another musical instrument upstairs. Yeah. Here's a picture of the church. Now, when you look at this painting of the church, this is called our steeple. You see our steeple? And when you look at our steeple, it has a pointy thing on top, and it connects to the bottom. And here in the middle, there are what's called louvers. So this isn't solid here. It's open to the air. So right there where those louvers are, there's a musical instrument, and it would be right up there. In fact, when you're, when, yes, it's the bells. And when you're in confirmation, when you're in the sixth grade, we're going to climb all that way up there, and we're going to see it. Now, until sixth grade, don't want you to wait that long. That's what it looks like. And you see that man standing there? Yeah. Ours is that tall. So up there where those louvers are, there is a Deegan Carillon. And it has 20 big pipes that when you hit them, they ring like a bell. Those are called tube Carillon. Yes. Um, does, he wear, does he wear earmuffs? Well, this man here should wear earmuffs because... We had a confirmation class up there last year, and while we were in the middle of this, we asked Mr. Jeremy to play for us. And it was pretty loud. Because you can hear these bells a mile or two away from here. If you're on the other side of Lake Howard and the wind is blowing the right direction, when our carillon plays, you can hear it. If you're downtown and the wind is blowing the right direction, you can hear it. So when this church was built, they believed in music so much, they put a musical instrument upstairs that plays for everybody in town. I'll show you one more thing. because We've been moving some things around in our conference room in the office. In 1924, when the Deegan Carillon salesman came to town, they brought this. And they said... Wouldn't you love to hear this kind of music in your church? This is called a salesman sample. And the Deegan people would come around and they'd play for you and say, we make musical instruments and we can put a bell or tubular bell carol on and you can play 20 notes at a time up there. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? Somebody like to play a tune for me? Just come on up, grab the mallet. Very good. Somebody else? Beautiful. Anybody else want to play? Ricky, love it. Well, we'll have this down front after church. If anybody wants to come down and play it, you can. 
But today is a day when I just wanted to talk about how much music means for this church. So we have bells in the steeple. And when you leave church today, listen, because we have a player that will play that for you. We can also take requests from time to time because we can hook up a keyboard to it and Jeremy could play a tune for you. Yes? Can you hear it from inside? Tate, that's a real good question. You used to be able to. I want you to look at these windows over here. See those windows? You see the curvy thing at the top? Now come down right below the curvy thing. Do you see that there are three panels across there? The middle one looks fatter than the other. That used to open. And when you come down to the bottom, here at the bottom, let me show you what you're looking for. Just stay right where you are. See right here how this is thicker than this here and this one here and there's a fat one at the top? Those all used to open. And before we had air conditioning in the church, they opened all those windows. And yes, there was a keyboard right up here where Mr. Jeremy is. And before church, piano students in the church were allowed to play the carillon. Gene Thompson, Mr. Thompson, who's not with us anymore, told me when he was a young piano student, he would get to come in and play for 10 minutes before church on the carillon. And people inside would hear it because the windows were open. And people all over town would hear it and know, oh, the Presbyterian church is getting ready to have worship. Now that was pretty exciting. When we got air conditioning, then they closed those windows off permanently. And now we actually have plexiglass on the outside to keep our windows from being damaged. There was one problem with opening those windows. What do you think that was? Bugs, even worse, birds. They said every once in a while a bird or two would get loose in here and be flying all around. They said it was really hard to pay attention to the preaching when there were birds flying through. May have been a red bird, so. But that's what we do here at the church. So today you're going to hear the organ, you're going to hear the piano, you're going to hear our voices. I don't think they ever got stuck in the organ pipe, but I think they did get chased out of here a lot. But that was a little better than the church before that. Before we had this church, we had a church three blocks away that was sitting up high. And it says they had to put fence around the bottom because the pigs would get underneath and root around during church. And that bothered people too. So we don't have birds or pigs today, so we're going to be fine. Well, let's fold our hands and bow our heads and let's talk to God in prayer. God, we thank you for music. We thank you for these voices that you've given us that we can lift in song. We thank you for the piano players and the organists and the bell players. We thank you for the people who play the guitars and the drums, the people who do all they can to praise you through music. And God, I thank you for another group of musicians here who love music, talk about music, and are going to help us praise you for a long time to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for coming today. Thanks for coming down to help me with the story. We are inspired to be generous by a generous God. We are inspired to give by the greatest of givers. In gratitude to our Lord, let us present our tithes and offerings this morning.
Holy God, bless these gifts for your good use. May these tokens of our gratitude be of service and blessing the poor, feeding the hungry, clothing and sheltering those struggling to survive. Use these gifts to further Christ's mission and ministry in a hurting world. Amen. At this time, Sarah and Porter Summers are presenting their son Pierce for the sacrament of baptism. I'd invite their family to come forward now. And I'll be assisted by Elder Lisa Endress. Friends, hear the good news as it comes to us in the gospel according to Mark. They were bringing little children to Jesus so that Jesus might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant and he said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And Jesus took the children in his arms and he blessed them and he's laid, laid his hands upon them. Dearly beloved, the sacrament of baptism is, baptism is the word of God made visible as ordained by our Lord Jesus Christ. Baptism is to be understood as a sign of God's power and mercy and cleansing us of our sins and as a means whereby we are identified with Christ in his death and resurrection. Furthermore, baptism represents the outpouring of the Holy Spirit into the lives of God's people. It's regarded as the sign of our ingrafting into Christ and of our entrance into Christ's church. The baptism of infants and children has particular significance because it reminds us that long before a child is conscious of God or can confess God, God has chosen this child as God's own. The sacrament of baptism declares publicly that this child is claimed by God and grafted into the body of Christ, the church. You see, our children belong to the household and the family of God. Likewise, we are seen in this sacrament as helpless children ourselves, knowing that God in mercy has created us, loved us, cared for us, and claimed us. We are to see baptism as an ever-expanding process of our life and faith. In baptism, these parents today will pledge to raise their child to love and to serve Jesus Christ, you, the members of this family and the members of this congregation, on behalf of the Church of Jesus Christ, will also be asked if you will join them in your fellowship, in your support, and your prayers, so that in due time, this child will know Christ himself. Porta and Sarah, I ask you now, is Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior? Yes. Do you trust in him? Yes. And do you intend your son to be his disciple, to obey his word and to show his love? Let us bow before God. Most merciful and loving Father, we thank you for the church of your dear Son, for the ministry of the word and for the sacraments of grace. We praise you that you've given us such gracious promises concerning our children, that in your mercy you call them to you, marking them with this sacrament as a singular token and pledge of your love. We ask you now to set apart this water from a common to a sacred use. Grant that what we do now on earth may be confirmed in heaven. In humble faith, we present you this child. We ask you to receive him, to fill him with your Holy Spirit, and to keep him forever as your own, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I ask you now, what is the Christian name of your son? Pierce John. Pierce John, child of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May God's spirit dwell in you richly from this time forth. Amen. Friends, this child is now received into Christ's church. Do you, the members of this family and this congregation, on behalf of the whole church of Jesus Christ, undertake with these parents the Christian nurture of their child so that in due time he may confess his faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior? And will you endeavor by your example and fellowship to strengthen his family ties with the household and family of God. If you so, will you answer, we do. we do. 
So, I have a couple things to present today, and I thought maybe Sophie could hold on to one of them for us. So, this is a cradle cross that we're going to give to you, that you're going to hold for Pierce. And all of us down front can see, and you may be able to see, that this cross says Jesus. Now, these crosses have been bought for the last decade or so by the members of our Honduras mission team. And we hadn't been to Honduras for four years, and so this year we bought 40 of them when we came back because we were running out. So, Sophie, can you hold on to that? Nope. <laughs> I'm just going to put it over here. And then we do have a certificate that says that on this day, Pierce John Summers received the sacrament of Christian baptism. And so that will be a reminder of what we've done today. And if you are willing to let me hold on to this little jewel, friends, I would like to present to you now, hi, this newest member of the Church of Jesus Christ. This is Pierce John Summers, child of the covenant. And Pierce, this is your extended family. These are people who have said that they will do whatever they can to make sure that you know who Jesus is. They're going to live their lives in a way that they're going to teach you about the love of our Lord. Someday I'll tell you special things about each of these folks. See some little ones there? Yeah, and some bigger ones. And he said, I sense we're getting closer to the people that I really call family. But friends, I just want you to know that God's love pours into our lives in so many ways. And we are so blessed to be able to share faith with those for whom faith will be brand new and alive. Yeah. You've heard me say it a lot of times, but I'll say it again. God is so wise that when God decided to come and claim our hearts back, rather than coming as a king and demanding our allegiance, God came as a little teeny baby to win our hearts in love. So, Pierce, thank you for letting us remember our baptisms. Thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you all for sharing with us. Will you join with me as we offer our prayers as God's people this morning? Loving God, as summer rapidly rolls into fall and busy schedules give us little space to pause and contemplate the eternal, we quiet ourselves now to enter your presence, to open our minds and hearts, to breathe the air you provide, to feel our hearts beat, to give thanks, and to lift our prayerful petitions. You bless us, O God, with your steadfast love, surrounding us during times of suffering, comforting us in our sorrow, offering us hope to face whatever is ahead. There is so much devastation, so much pain. We cannot wrap our minds around it all. Yet we petition you, great God of all, to be with your people struggling to recover from natural disasters, to strengthen your people oppressed by worldly powers or greedy regimes, to soften hearts otherwise hardened by war or violence, heal those who are wounded, sick, or grieving. Faithful God, we trust that you will never abandon us. We trust in your promise to provide for us, your, your children and your creation. We know joy because of you. We are blessed with family, friends, and neighbors by your call to beloved community. Even in the midst of suffering, you grace us with joyful opportunities to laugh, play, sing, and dance. Help us, holy God, 
to not be so focused on all that is going wrong that we miss all that is going right. Finally, ground us in your good news, O oh God, and help us hold on to your promise of redemption in Jesus our Christ. Keep our feet steady on Christ's path. Help us to follow his teachings. Help us love as he loved. Now hear us as we pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our scripture lesson for today comes to us in the Old Testament book known as 1 Samuel. I would invite you to turn there in the Bible that you brought from home or the Bible you might find in the pew. As we listen for God's word from the New Revised Standard Version, 1 Samuel chapter 16, beginning with verse 14. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. And Saul's servants said to him, or Saul servant said, See now, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord now command the servants who attend you to look for someone who is skillful in playing the lyre. And when the evil spirit from God is upon you, he will play it, and you will feel better. So Saul said to his servants, Provide for me someone who can play well and bring him to me. One of the young men answered, I've seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite who is skillful in playing, a man of valor, a warrior, prudent in speech, a man of good presence, and the Lord is with him. So Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David who is with the sheep. Jesse took a donkey and loaded it with bread, a skin of wine, and a kid, and sent them by his son David to Saul. David said to Saul, and came to Saul and entered his service. Saul loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David remain in my service, for he's found favor in my sight. And whenever the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, David took the lyre and played it with his hand, and Saul would be relieved and feel better, and the evil spirit would depart from him. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week, I had the tech people to project some things so I could show you some of my time pieces, different watches and clocks that fill my life. Well, this week, after spending some time over the holiday weekend cleaning out a shed at my house, I thought briefly about doing another show and tell, and this one was going to be on music-related items. I wondered how many of you would be intrigued by the two eight-track tape players that I still have in my collection. I have a Craig Underdash eight-track player that I first installed in my 1970 and a half Toyota Corolla when I turned 16. I moved it three years later to my 1974 Hilux pickup truck. Or I wondered if you might be enamored with a GE AM FM 8-track portable boombox that I got as a high school graduation present. From your laughter, I see that you're glad I did not show you my treasures <laughs> because I was also going to show you a tape case filled with the cassettes that I possess and show you my Sony Walkman that I played them on, or then my Sony Discman when I decided to come later in the 20th century. All of that would have been proof that music has meant something to me for a big part of my life. Well, this Tuesday at our church staff meeting, I asked this sharing question. I said, tell us your name and what music you listened to in high school. And I have to tell you, some of our weekly sharing questions fall flat. This one didn't. Immediately, the people responded, and most of them were extremely animated with their responses. 
It was then that I realized that the sermon title for this week was okay. I wanted to preach about music and me. I hope that just a little snippet from my life might prompt you to memories in your own life, especially when it comes to music. My parents gave me piano lessons and guitar lessons when I was still in grade school. My parents encouraged me to sing in the children's choir in our church. And even though I've forgotten how to read music, because I did not pursue an instrument or a formal choir or a band setting, there has been a soundtrack to most of my life. Even now, whether I'm in the car, in a truck, surrounded by the stereo speakers in the room at my house where I spend some of my time, I still get lost in a song. And I'm amazed at how some notes of some music can make my soul soar. There's something that I can't explain that happens in me when I hear what I call my music. Now, when our church staff started talking about the music we listened to in high school, as you can imagine, most of the responses were secular songs. From that group of seven or eight this past Tuesday, we heard shout-outs to rock, to R&B, to swing, to country. And I have to admit that during my life, my tastes have changed. And in different phases of my life, different genres of music have been defining or riveting. And then there's been faith music interspersed along the way. Today we played Jesus Loves Me. That's the song that we sang as the children came forward for the time with the younger disciples. Now in our hymn book it is hymn 188. And it's really interesting, at the bottom of the page of hymn 188, there's a note that the hymnal editors included. It says, few songs of faith have supported people from cradle to grave like this one. The great theologian Karl Barth said that its opening two lines were a summary of all that he had ever learned about faith. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. It was a lady named Mrs. Garrett. She was the children's choir director at the First United Presbyterian Church in Olney, Illinois, when I was in that church. She's the lady who took our entire children's choir to see the movie Oliver when it was first released in theaters. And she also led us through a number of musical productions, one of which was called The Swiss Nativity. Now that little nativity setting was a children's choir performance with no props. Everything was music or imagination. I can still remember a couple of the lines, one of which may have been my solo. A farm fresh egg I'm bringing, I'm bringing. Summer conferences in my youth group days gave me a song and a word to use as an affirmation of faith. There are motions with this one. I'm not going to sing it. I'm not going to act it out, at least not for free in front of you now. <laughs> it goes, he's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's the lily of the valley, the bright morning sun. I don't care what they may say. I'm getting down on my knees and pray. And I'm going to wait, wait right here till Jesus comes. During several summers, early in my ministry, I would volunteer at Cedar Kirk to be a week-long camp worship leader. And whether we were inside the pavilion at Cedar Kirk, surrounded by the banners of all of our churches, or we were out in a place at Cedar Kirk called the Sands, out near the river, whenever the groups would gather for worship, there was a little camp song that we sang to call us there. The words say, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Throughout my life, in addition to the secular songs that do capture my imagination a lot, there have been sacred songs that have led my faith journey. You have a whole hymnal here full of examples. Hymn number one in the New Presbyterian hymnal is Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. 
I went through four Presbyterian hymnals at some part in my life before that one came number one. But I think it's appropriate there. In our hymnal we have amazing grace that means so much to so many of us. We have songs like Silent Night, Holy Night, All is Calm, All is Bright. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, number 408. And then our praise band. In the last few years, they have touched my heart and my soul deeply with so many of the songs that they've introduced and they've made a regular part of our worship life. Like Matt Redmond's 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O, O my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O my soul. I'll worship His holy name. Music and me. I can't explain it. I don't need to explain it. Because it seems like most of us here know what music does to us. That gives me a kinship with many of the children of God. Listen again, if you will, to a reading from 1 Samuel 16. The spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Saul's servant said, There's an evil spirit tormenting you. Let the Lord command his servants... To look for someone who is skillful in playing the lyre. And when the evil spirit from God is upon you, he will play it. And you will feel better. We know in the story that somebody said, I've heard that David, one of the sons of Jesse from Bethlehem, is skillful in playing. And so they brought David in. Let David remain in my service, Saul then said, for he's found favor in my sight. And whenever an evil spirit from God came upon Saul, David took the lyre and played it with his hand, and Saul would be relieved and feel better. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That story is recorded right before the story of David and Goliath. Right before. Listen again to how David is portrayed in 1 Samuel 16. He was a son of Jesse, thank you. He was a man of valor. He was a warrior. He was prudent in speech. He was a man of good presence as the Lord was with him. And David was skilled in playing. And what David played was more than simply music to Saul's ears. It's what soothed Saul's troubled spirit. That's a powerful Old Testament story. Listen, if you will, to a reading from the New Testament. Matthew chapter 26, beginning with verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you. For this is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink again from this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On the last night that Jesus spent with his friends... After they had celebrated a last supper and before they went to the Mount of Olives for what would be for many of them a farewell to their Lord, they sang a hymn together. As a final closure to the act of communion, as a special part of their communion with one another, they sang a hymn together. Listen to one more reading. This one from Acts chapter 16. Beginning with verse 16. One day as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. 
While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out of her that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and they dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. And when they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews. And they're advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them. And the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. After what you might call a conflict with the crowds, after being stripped and beaten with rods, being thrown into prison and having their feet fastened into the stocks, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Music has a way of touching our souls. Well, in thinking this week about music and me, I'm not really a success story. In fact, sometimes I feel like I need to reimburse my parents for what they spent on piano lessons and guitar lessons, not to mention on buying a piano and a guitar. But you know, they helped me learn something about music and what I have learned about what music does for me as a child of God, for us as children of God, has allowed me to truly praise God for the people in our church and in my life that have used their God-given talents to play music, to lead us in music, to help our spirits, and to let our soul, souls soar heavenward. There's a man named David. He was skilled in playing the lyre. He also composed much of the songbook of ancient Israel that we have in our Bible right now known as the Psalms. And I don't know if it was Jesus or another one of the twelve who led the singing after the Last Supper, but they sang a hymn together. Then we find that Paul and Silas sang hymns and the prisoners in the Philippian jail listened and I imagine during that night of incarceration, they were comforted. And today, like many Sundays, music means so much for our time together in worship. And this afternoon, we're going to have a special treat to come back together at 4 o'clock right here, where we're treated to a great deal of what music and me may mean to a guy named Jeremy Rath. Another person who can be described as a man of valor. A man of good presence for the Lord is with him. A man who is skillful in playing. Friends, today and each day, let's keep celebrating the gift of music that God has given us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, please join as we conclude our worship singing a hymn together, number 634, To God Be the Glory.
Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the land. Serve the Lord with gladness and come into God's presence always with singing. I hope you enjoy music and I hope today has been a blessing to you. I hope this afternoon we'll continue that blessing. And I hope we'll all remember to take that gift and use it to praise God. And as we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.